So when this turns on, it's gonna automatically detect that this is a 24 volt system, but we need to go into the app and program it so that we have this disconnect set for what I want my simplify batteries to disconnect at, which I'm going on memory, I think it's 25.2 um, would be 20% state of charge. I don't want to go any lower than 20% state of charge because that will guarantee me that I get those 10,000 cycles. Um, all right. So I'm going to mount this right here. This is where the power is coming from. Power is coming from our positive bus uh, via the batteries. So this needs to be on the in. So we're going to cut this so that I can connect to this terminal right here, which says in. So I got these little ring terminals here. I'm going to crimp one of these on like that. Um, you always want the washer on top of this because you want as good a connection as possible with um, with the plate underneath. And then so this right here, I'm going to leave a little bit of slack there. I think I'm just going to go like this and strip it here and connect it. Right. Oh. Okay, so we need to make a connection to our negative bus so this thing can have power to actually work. Alright, so when this turns on, it's going to automatically detect that this is a 24 volt system. But we need to go into the app and program it so that we have this disconnect set for what I want my Simplify batteries to disconnect at. This has all my devices. I've got three charge controllers. Here, um, I've got a BMB712, which is the battery monitor. And then this one right here is this new device. It's already showing up. Um, so I'm gonna click on that. I've never done this before, so. All right, so we gotta enter our code. Uh, our code, uh, my code is very difficult to figure out. It's zero, 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 pair. So if you know where my cabin is, you can come here and um, turn off all my solar. All right, so we're at 27.9. So we're relatively high just because of the state of charging that we're in. Unsecured access. Don't warn me again for this product that nobody comes out here. Okay, here we go. Um, so shut down 21. That's like super low for lithium. User defined, we're gonna do user defined. Um, so now I can click on those. Um, we're gonna our shutdown voltage is gonna be much higher. All right. Okay. Recommended operating conditions: low cutoff voltage for 80% depth of discharge, which is the full 10,000 cycles. Um, so they want 25.1. Was I saying 25.2? Um, okay. So we're gonna set this to 25.1. When do we want it to? reconnect so if we restart it right now at 20 shut down why does it say 23.8 maybe because i got to do the restart first we'll do the restart at uh 50 percent so we'll do 25.5 it probably forced me to have a restart or a disconnect somewhere different from my restart all right so that is the voltage at which the um, low voltage disconnect will reconnect to the battery which is 50%. Um, and now we can set the shutdown voltage, which is 25.1. All right, I think that's good. I love this Victron stuff. I'm not like sponsored or anything, but it's just, I love being able to go in here. I can see, I can see my battery voltage. I can see my state of charge is 100. I can go to like individual charge controllers, like um, my west facing array right here. Shouldn't be making barely any power. I can still check it if I want to. Uh, it's cloudy out and the sun is not facing it, so it's making two watts. Oh, there we go. That's what we're looking for right there. All right, so I'm just going to make some battery cables for these new batteries. Um, the way that I have my old batteries wired, they were each six volt batteries, and they were wired in series. 
um, kind of daisy chained. These cannot be wired in series. They're always meant to be wired in parallel. Um, and they also don't want you to go from terminal to terminal. Um, they want you to either use copper bar stock or for each battery to have its own positive and negative wire back to your positive and negative bus bars. So we're gonna do it that way because I don't have any, um, any bar stock to um, do that. So I'm gonna just measure these. I'm gonna cut these all to the same length and then just turn them into cables. Things a little bit dull. That's three, and we gotta do one more. Which basically, whoops. Now I'm gonna put one of these on each end. Need, um, yeah, so we're just gonna strip off a little section of this. These are four gauge. I don't have a stripper that goes to four gauge, so we're just kind of slowly working our way through. There we go. I'm gonna put one of these on. I got this thing just as adjustable, so I've got this thing set for four gauge. Four gauge is what it says in the manual, by the way, to use. Okay. All right, and then what I like to do, Lowe's didn't have um, red four gauge wire. They only had black. Um, so I like to tape them just so you know. Um, and I, I want to start right here. This makes it less chance that you'll accidentally touch both positive and negative leads together. And then we'll, uh, we'll put some of this tape here on the other end as well. And we'll know that this is our positive. We're going to make one more of these and then we'll make two negatives. Let's put some in the middle just in case. Basically every every other one of these is gonna be exactly the same, so I don't know if we need much more, but I'll film it from a different angle. Um, so red means positive and black means negative in DC, but um, then when you're working with AC current, um, <laughs> black is, is positive as well as red is also positive. Um, so it can create some confusion. So it's always good to have, you know, have your system kind of consistent and labeled and marked. Cool. Alright, so now there's a definite order of commissioning. So we've got our solar off and we've got our connection to the batteries um, off right now. Um, so we're gonna heck hook everything up. We'll hook we'll hook the batteries to the system, we'll turn that on, we'll program everything, and then once everything's programmed, we'll turn the charge controllers on. in there so we've got um two negative so i just wanted to just check and make sure that both of these internal breakers are off and they are um, and then i've got all my other breakers off off um, off everything is off 
There we go. Okay, cool. So my negative connection is actually coming from my shunt, my current measuring device. The shunt gives all of the data to this little guy right here, which is the battery monitor. Um, but my positive connection is just going to come off my positive bus bar. And this is where making the cables the same length results in a little bit of a slop with the install. So we're just going to have to figure out how we want to deal with that. So we might get a little spark um, depending on what the uh, capacitors in the inverter have done. Uh, well, we shouldn't because the breaker's off, but who knows. Okay. Oh, shoot. Put this in. <laughs> Yeah, I'll have to come back and hit these all with a torque wrench, and I, I think I've got to put actually put these um, positive wires in some conduit like this as well. So I, I, I might even have some up in the loft. I'm not sure, <laughs> but we can at least get these things charging up because they they ship them at like a, I think 20% data charge um, for some kind of safety reason. I don't know exactly why. So they'll they'll need to get a little charge in them. Yeah, so basically they want um, all the batteries sized the same. So your longest lead, which is this negative, you, you basically size that first and then you make them all the same size. So I'm ending up with just a little bit of this extra stuff here. All right, so I know um, that we can basically make our battery. Um, this, this is battery to charge controller connection. So there's not going to be any charging going on when I turn this on because the solar input is off right now. So we can turn this on um, and we can turn this on uh, and then we can finally turn our batteries on and everything should be lighting up. Yeah, so the lights came back on. So now what we want to do is we want to start programming these things. But um, So battery capacity. The amp hours of each one of these is 151, and we're going to have two of them. So we're at 302. Um, charged voltage. I guess charged voltage is just going to be whatever it says in this chart for 100% state of charge. So let's look at that. Okay, so 26.25 volts for for mine for fully charged. So we'll put that in now. So it's still saying um, we're 90. We're not 99% charged. Um, I don't think. Unless they. What did I say that voltage was? That it was measured like 26 something. They may have been almost fully charged. I think it said 26.1. Relay, we're not going to do anything with the relay. We're not going to do anything with the alarm. The display uh, should be fine. Smart networking, okay. So now we can go back to these individual controllers. We were This This is the main one. Um, and I think I just needed... Float is the same. Equalize is going to just be set to 28. There's really no point to an equalize with this type of chemistry. That's, that's a kind of a lead acid thing. So that's really interesting. Six minutes is way different than what the um, default was. Um, I could have swore I saw something for tail current somewhere in the manual when I read it before. I, I don't remember what it was and I'm not gonna look for it now, but I'm pretty sure I can set that tail current. I just don't know what to set it to. Um, I don't remember seeing anything about rebulk voltage offset. So I think we're going to call that one okay. We can turn on this charger. This is the one I just set, the, um, the 30 amp charger. Uh, and I know which one to switch because I got a 30 amp um, breaker there. So now we're actually, soon we'll be 
charging this. There we go. It's cloudy. <laughs> it's taking some time. Okay, so we're putting like 30 to 40 watts into the batteries right now, which is, you know, not that great, but it's cloudy, overcast day. So 